Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today, we got an 8RT370 that we're gonna be swapping out the tracks on. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to detension the tracks, how to remove and replace the tracks, retention the tracks, and then we'll learn how to adjust the tracks so that they're properly aligned. So let's check it out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to detension the tracks. I um, already got the tractor driven up on blocks here. Um, that allows these front idler wheels to fully retract all the way back. Because sometimes if we just take the tension off, these idler wheels won't go all the way back. Now you can do this one or two ways. You can drive it up on blocks to help put weight on those front idlers to retract the cylinders all the way. Or you can attach a come along or a chain binder. Um, to one of these front bolts, loosen that bolt out a little bit, and run a chain back around here and tighten it while you're detensioning it, and that'll help retract that either back all the way. So we got a uh, track detention hose here, so we've got a, a quick coupler here, and then we just got a standard uh, ISO coupler here that's going to go into the SCV. So we're going to come over here, we're going to snap this on. Like that. Come around the back. And you're gonna put this on the left port, the extend side. All right, so now we got the hose hooked up. We're gonna turn this valve on. You can hear some of that pressure release out and fill this hose here. Okay, so in order to properly detension the tracks, um, we're going to set SCV 1 and 2. We want to make sure that the time is on continuous C here. And then the flow, we're going to make sure that the flow is on 5. And we're going to do that on both SCV 1 and 2. And then we're going to be detenting the SCV levers 1 and 2 forward like that in order to return that oil through that extend port. And then when we tension the tracks, we're just gonna be doing the opposite. We're gonna be pulling back on the detent in order to put um, tension in those cylinders. Um, and then when you're detensioning it, you wanna run it for five minutes. And then when you're tensioning it, you wanna run it for five minutes. So that's how you do that. Okay, so we got the, the tracks detensioned and um, it worked out perfectly. As it was coming back, it was kind of rolling off this block, but it was putting pressure on the wheel this way to fully retract that idler. So I really like doing it that way. Um, you could also put a forklift and put pressure with a fork right here on the, on the tread to kind of push as it's detensioning if you think that that idler is not going back all the way. So now what we got to do is get the tractor jacked up. I've got three jacks. Um, I'm going to just lift one side of the tractor. So we're just going to do one track at a time. So we're going to raise this side up and then we'll be taking this either wheel off and then we can get the track off. Okay, now that we got the track detention here, I'm going to start on this right side here. Um, we're going to go ahead and I put a jack underneath the front to kind of support the weight of the engine a little bit. I just put a jack, put a pin in it, and then we come back here. We're going to put an air jack underneath um, this beam, and then I put an air jack underneath the final drive. So we'll get this jacked up to where the tracks are, you know, about five inches off the ground. And uh, we'll start taking the idler wheel off here. So, okay. you just want to, well, we'll just, we'll just loosen them up right now. Okay. All right. 
there. So we're just loosening those bolts up a little bit. I got Josh helping me again today. <laughs> so I just get them loosened up. Now we're going to go ahead and get these uh, tracks aired up. So if you want to air that up, Josh. That three-quarter Milwaukee zipped out them bolts like they're nothing. And those torque to 775 foot-pounds. Okay, so that'll give us plenty of clearance to get those drive lugs to clear underneath those mid rollers. Now we're going to use this cherry picker here. And I took the hook off the front and I have a bolt. There's a bolt and a nut sticking up through here. And then I put a little rubber protective piece and then I tape this rag on here just so we don't scratch this pretty wheel. tension on it. Now take out the bolts. You dropping stuff today? So now we're going to use the forklift to pull this track off the front a little bit and then we'll push the bottom out and then we're going to raise the, the top up and um, sometimes i got to add some blocks in there to kind of, so the drive lugs will set on the blocks so we can slide off the drive wheels here. So let's get this track off. trouble getting the, the track off the idler there so um, I went ahead and put the detention hose back on and released the pressure and then we just took the, the forks and pushed on the front to get that um, pushed back all the way so now we can get this track off a little easier. What we did was you know you get it off the front here and then I take the track and then I push it this way as far as I can and then I pick it up and I lay a block in here to keep them drive lugs from falling down in between the drive wheels. Same for right here. And then we'll stick the forks in the middle of the track. We'll wrap a strap around it and then we can pull the belt off and then we'll um, get it to where it's gonna be outside of the track. We're gonna have it on the ground right about here. So that's the way we get these tracks off. Ideally, we use two forklifts for this whole operation, but um, I don't have another small forklift available today. So um, I wanted to show you guys this can be done with one forklift. Um, putting the new track on, we're probably going to use a second forklift, but getting the track off, um, we can do it with one. So that's why we're going to roll today. We got the tracks off and today we're putting on a new set of tracks um, by Lock Performance. These are the Track Man by Lock. And look how awesome these things look. I mean, they got some super tall tread on them, which I think is going to ride a little better. Um, when you get a track that the treads are wore all the way down, um, you'll notice that the ride quality goes down. The tractor will ride really rough. so. I'm hoping that these actually ride a lot better and uh, we're putting 18 inch tracks on here. Um, we took 24 inch tracks off. Um, we do have a narrow track frame. Um, so 
we want to put the 18 inch racks on so they weren't wearing funky um, like they were on the 24. So now we're going to pick up the back here, get it hooked over the top, get the lugs in between the drive wheels, and then we'll hook it around the front side. Okay, so you want to put on some, some soapy water. Spray these wheels down because with that brand new track, they're kind of sticky and tacky and this will help slide that on real good. All right, we got the track slid on there. Sorry I didn't get the time lapse of it going up around the top, but we just literally forked it up, hooked it over, kind of pushed it over this way, and now we hook it around the, the front of the wheel Make sure we get the drive lugs, you know, past the outer mid rollers here. Now we've got the, uh, the cherry picker with the wheel and we're gonna install the idler. So we got the wheel mounted up there with my fancy little cherry picker trick. Works pretty good, doesn't it, Josh? Yes, sir. And then I just kind of guide it in with a big punch there, get it lined up, throw these bolts in there. We'll give her a couple of duggas with the Milwaukee three-quarter, and then um, we'll tension the track, and then we'll set this um, tractor back down on the ground. So we got to torque these to 770 five foot pounds. Yeah, 775. All the torques. All of them. I mean, you're barely ug a dugging those in, and I bet you we won't have to turn them very much with that torque wrench. Now we are going to tension the tracks, and then we'll set it down. All right, we got the pins out. I'm gonna lower this thing down. Man, do those tracks look sweet. Those tracks look nice, Josh. Yes, they do. Very aggressive. They are very aggressive. But I think they'll ride nice, too. I think so. Plus, you're going to get the extra tractions and the wet and the muck. It looks so much better with an 18-inch track on the narrow track frame. Yeah, I like it. Okay, now we're gonna take this thing and torque the wheel bolts first to 775, and then we'll take it outside and we're gonna do the whole alignment procedure. Check out this torque wrench. This is a one inch torque wrench. We got it set to 775. It's got a little cheater pipe that mounts on it. Are we ready? I'm ready. Let's do this.
Okay, so the tracks are on. Of course, we just, you know, repeated the exact same procedure for the other side. So, tracks are tensioned. Now what we did is you want to drive the tractor in a straight line, not touching the steering wheel, back and forth here on the flattest ground that you got. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get super flat ground um, long enough, but you, you need at least 150 feet to run back and forth. So I just run the tractor back and forth about four times and then I stop after I'm coming forward and then I'm coming in and I'm checking the distance between the guide lugs and the mid rollers here. Now we should have about a quarter inch gap between each mid roller for it to be center but um, on this one I could stick my, I can't stick my finger in between there. But on this side, I can, so the track needs to go that way. So here you've got the track adjustment here, and you got a little cool little diagram here. So, you know, if we, tie, we take this lock plate off here that keeps that from turning, there's one exactly like this on the other side, then you want to loosen the side that you want the track to move, and then you turn the opposite side I, you know, I start, if you got to move a lot, you go one full turn. If you got to move a little bit, you go half turns. So, um, I've already made a couple adjustments already. And, uh, I've got Brandon here on the other side. He's a high school student that's working at the dealership and he's interested in becoming John Deere tech. How you doing, Brandon? Oh, just lovely. It's a little cold out here today. It is a little cold. It's a little breezy and it's about 30 degrees yeah. and it was like almost 80 degrees just a few days ago. So uh -huh. we're not used to this yet. So he's over here. He's over here. He made an adjustment. I taught him how to adjust the, uh, the adjuster. So we made another adjustment and we're getting ready to um, drive the tractor back and forth. Now you got these lock plates that'll go on there mm -hmm. and if they don't, if you can't get that bolt in, you just flip that plate around and then if it doesn't go with the plate, doesn't go with the plate flip around, then you tighten it just a little bit more to get that lock plate in there. So we ready to drive this thing back and forth again? I think so. Okay, so we're rechecking our track alignment here. I'm still tight on the outside. I can't put my fingers in there and gotta stick my whole hand in on this inside one. So the track needs to move to the inside. So which side do we need to loosen? Loosen the 
this outside and tighten the inside. Opposite. We want to loosen the side we want it to go. So we want it to oh. go to the inside. Okay. So we're going to loosen this side, the inside. Okay. And then we're going to tighten this side. I guess we'll just go another half a turn. So he's going to loosen the inside. Um, that adjustment nut is a 30 millimeter, and then the, the lock bolt is an 18. And technically, when you get done, you want to torque those adjusting um, screws to 221 foot pounds. Got her loose, loose? Oh, yeah, finger loose. Okay, that's what you want. We're gonna move that half a turn. Half a turn. And the mark will be. There you go. Right. So we're gonna lock this side down. And then we'll tighten the other side. Click. 221, <laughs> I heard it. I don't I don't bother with torquing them as we're adjusting it, you know, I just get them good and tight. Then when we're finally done, we're the, we got the track and line, then then I torque everything to spec. Let's check this other side. What do you think? Not too bad. Really? Actually, yeah, not too bad at all. Well, <laughs> I just don't believe it. <laughs> well, you got to kind of go to this inside one to feel it, but it's a little tight there. So it could go, it can go a little more to the inside. All right, so we'll loosen that So we're going to loosen the inside okay. first. Yep. We'll make a little adjustment. All right, we're going to try this one more time. Uh, hopefully it's the last time we have to do this, but uh, I seriously doubt it. <laughs> the fingers hurt uh -huh. outside here. Ears, so face. All of the above. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing moving. Just back and forth. So, Brandon, you're in high school now. Yes, sir. You're a senior, right? Yes, sir. And you're going to be going into the John Deere program? Mm -hmm. Yep, next fall. Next fall at uh, Lakeland College? Yep, yep. And uh, what, what made you decide to become a John Deere technician? Well, I've always enjoyed being on the farm and I've always liked tractors and I was doing work for a fellow John, a Sloan Implement employee and he offered me, he was talking about Sloan's and offered me to come in one day and see what it's all about and I enjoyed it. You just fell in love, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, uh uh-huh. It's a really good career to get into. I really love it. I'm very passionate about John Deere. Yeah, me too. Sloan Implement's definitely the best company to work for. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Now we're going to go forward. Oh, yeah. She's a little jumpy when she's cold. <laughs> but I can definitely tell that these new tracks ride better. Mm -hmm. 100%. And because when I was driving around with those junky 24 inch tracks, yeah. it was pretty rough. Mm -hmm. um, but these tracks with the Taller tread depth, I think, makes a big difference. You know, you got more squish, and this tractor's got cab suspension too, so it it rides really nice. Go one more back and forth here. Speed up a little bit. We're on the straightaway, I usually run anywhere between two and three and a half mile an hour when I'm going back and forth. 
All right, so what do you think? Not terrible. I did think it move? It, it did. It moved I the think, direction we wanted it to move. Correct, yes. I think this, the inside can come out just a little bit, but it's not terrible. Maybe a quarter of a turn. Oh, that that's better. Man, that's, that's not bad. Yeah, not at all. That's not bad. We're, I mean, it's it's hard to get it absolutely perfect, but we're going to get it, you know, the best, closest that we possibly uh -huh. can. And then the, the real secret to track alignment is to get it as best as you can, driving back and forth here, and then I take it out on the road and I drive it for a ways. And then I come back and then I'm going to be feeling... The temperature of these drive lugs inside and outside now if you got one side that's hot sticky and tacky then the other side is you know cold then we know that it's rubbing on that side that's hot and tacky we don't want that so we would make an adjustment at that point but if we take it down the road and we check the temperatures both sides you can even use an infrared temperature gun to actually measure the temperature of the lugs inside and out but i've been doing it long enough to where i can just use my hand okay. and feel so we want the same temperature on both sides okay so this track isn't going to ride dead center all the yeah. time you know as you're making turns and stuff you know that track's going to move but most of the time you're driving straight right yeah so we want to make sure you know when we're driving straight long distances down the road that the track isn't biased left or right and that we're not heating up on one side because if we get real hot and tacky on one side it'll start eating those lugs and we don't want that so i think we're going to leave that side alone for now i think it's ready that side's ready for a road trip let's check this side track needs to come out some needs to come out so did we move we did move Not too much there. too much yes. and we only went a quarter turn yeah see uh, this is what you fight uh, with track adjustment it, it can it can drive you nuts sometimes so um, we're gonna make an adjustment we're gonna bring it to the outside and uh, maybe we'll go just you know just a tickle this time just a wee bit okay we finally got this thing um, the track aligned and it it took I don't know probably a good three hours to get this thing where I thought it was good enough to go um, but sometimes you got to run this thing back and forth a couple times and check and see what the alignment is and then go ahead and run it back and forth again just to make sure that it's consistent you know if it's consistently being on the inside or the outside you know after a couple more then go ahead and make your adjustment because sometimes you can make an adjustment and you drive it back and forth and it doesn't move or you, you think it did move and you make another adjustment and then you drive it back and forth again and then it's it goes clear to the other side so you're just looking for consistency you know if it's consistently inside then you're going to move it so if you just drive it once and it's on the inside you know you might have to adjust it a little bit go ahead and drive it again if it doesn't move drive it again and just make sure that it um, is staying where it's at so it can be time consuming to adjust these tracks but i got it done and uh, now brandon knows how to adjust the tracks so you know i sure as heck wasn't adjusting tracks whenever i was 18 years old in high school so that's pretty cool he's kind of got a a head start in his career as being a John Deere technician so these tracks I tell you what they are nice you can definitely tell a difference in ride quality immediately when you put these on I mean these are you know they're all molded one piece it doesn't look like the the lugs are you know like welded on you know it's all one piece and these are just absolutely premium quality tracks. So these are Trackman by Lock Performance. So 
pretty nice tracks. Probably one of the best set of tracks I've ever put on or seen, so pretty excited about how these are going to do in a couple years. So, yeah. So she's all ready to go. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode of ZK Master Tech. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And until next time, keep that green iron moving.